thousands of anti-nuclear protesters uh, marching in Japan, demonstrating for the closure of its atomic power stations. Do you really think that Japan will listen to them and, uh, and actually pull the plug on its reactors now? Uh, I think there's large sections of the Japanese society that want uh, an alternative to nuclear power. The Japanese government, uh, I think, is divided on this issue. I think Prime Minister Khan probably would like to see less nuclear. Uh, he is from the Democratic Party. Uh, the opposition party, Liberal Democrats, who have been attacking Prime Minister Khan, they're the ones largely responsible for the last half century of nuclear policy of Japan. And at the moment, they're not being held accountable. I think uh, a broader understanding of how responsible the political party, the LDP, their bureaucrats and the industry uh, may actually lead to a, a stronger support for the current democratic government, which could then push for a, a non-nuclear policy. What about the situation now? Reports that uh, Fukushima is still emitting radiation and the government's reports uh, suggesting that the situation there is much worse than previously thought. Now, when this story first broke, I spoke to an analyst from the US. He said this could be Chernobyl on steroids. Do you think he could be right now? Well, we, we first talked about fuel melt within about two hours of hearing that they'd lost complete cooling of the reactors at Fukushima Daiichi. Uh, they were, it was inevitable, and TEPCO knew this, NISA, the Japanese regulators, knew this, and the entire global nuclear industry, Russian government, US government, British government, the IEA, they all knew that nuclear fuel would melt if you lose cooling capacity of operating reactors. That all took place within hours of the earthquake and the tsunami. Uh, and it's taken two, now three months, for some of this information to be officially confirmed uh, by the government. Uh, the situation is not under control at the site. And as you said, and as you heard from your reporter, there is huge contamination problems on the site, which threaten further releases into the environment. OK, please explain then what those threats are now. If the situation really could be as bad as people suggest, what could the consequences be now? Well, the first thing is that the explosions that took place in the first days, they released a large amount of radioactivity. Perhaps 90% of it ended into the, entered into the Pacific because of the prevailing winds. Perhaps 10% landed or more landed on the mainland of Japan, which is why you've got contamination tens and tens of kilometers away from the site. The problem is that as a result of these explosions and as a result of the core melt in these reactors, contaminated water the water that was cooled by, used by TEPCO to cool the reactors uh, has now built up on site. We know that maybe five to 10,000 tonnes has been released into the Pacific, but there's an additional 100,000 tonnes of highly contaminated water sitting inside the reactor buildings, inside the turbine halls. Okay. The capacity to deal with that is very limited, and they're predicting that by the end of this year it could be one quarter of a million tonnes of highly contaminated water. What about some of the anecdotal evidence that's coming out of Japan at the moment? A lot of the international uh, media covered a story about the birth of a white rabbit with no ears, and that did actually spark a lot of alarm within the Fukushima area. I mean, could, could something like that really be a consequence of what's happened there, or, or is this just an overreaction, people jumping to, to uh, exaggerated speculation? There's bound to be a lot of these stories. Uh, there's certainly there's a serious issue of the long-term health consequences and environmental consequences of radiation. I think we can discount the idea of a, a rabbit being affected at this stage. Radiation, depending on the type of radiation, can be seen in a relatively short period of time, particularly with thyroid cancers in children, but more long-term, particularly solid tumours, is over several decades. Just briefly, I've got, I've got to finish here very quickly. You are an independent nuclear energy consultant. Is the nuclear energy industry on its last legs now? What are you saying to people? Are you saying uh, trying to put people at ease or could your business as such, the nuclear energy business, be really at a threat now of uh, being closed down? Particularly when you think of Germany's attitude. Just briefly. Very quickly, the German government has taken the right decision. You cannot guarantee nuclear safety. Nuclear industry was already on its last legs before Fukushima. This is really going to be the end. But it's going to take a long time. Sean Burney, thanks so much for that. Good to hear what you have to say. Joining us live there in the UK.